welcome to episode four of Musical Chairs with the Knights. In our last episode of this series, you will get to meet three more knights who will introduce their instruments. Can you remember what instruments we've met so far? Let's see. There was the violin, French horn, the clarinet, the cello, the oboe, the piano, and we learned all about so many instruments in the percussion family. And today we get to learn about the trumpet, the flute, and my favorite, can you guess what it is? The viola. As always, listen carefully so that you'll be ready for the short quiz at the end. There are a few instruments that we haven't featured yet. Do you know what they are? If you do, and you come see us in person, let us know, and we would love to say hello to you. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy meeting Cecil, Alex, and Mario. Hi, my name is Cecil, and I'm a trumpet player with the Knights. Welcome to this episode of our educational series. Today, I'm going to show you a few things about the trumpet. What is a trumpet? A trumpet is a brass instrument and it's a member of the brass instrument family. You may also know that the brass instrument family includes the trumpet, the French horn, the trombone, and the tuba. The trumpet is comprised of a long series of tubes that curve around a mouthpiece and a bell. The reason it's called a bell is because it looks like the shape of a bell. The trumpet has been around for a very, very long time. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of years. The trumpet is played in several different types of music styles and has also served in many, many different roles. For instance, the trumpet has played fanfares in militaries for hundreds and hundreds of years. Here's an example of a fanfare. So, how does the trumpet work? Many of you will think that you just blow air into the instrument. Let's see what happens if I just blow air into the trumpet. Did you hear that? There was air coming out of my bell, but there was no sound. So how is sound produced on the trumpet? Well, you have to blow air and you have to buzz your lips. Do you want to try to buzz your lips? Try it. Can you buzz your lips? When you're able to buzz your lips, you can take the trumpet mouthpiece and actually make a buzz. Once you're able to produce a buzz on the mouthpiece, you can put the mouthpiece into the trumpet and make a sound. It's important to breathe before you play the trumpet. Otherwise, you'll run out of air. Do you want to try to take a breath with me? Let's try it together. I'll count one, two, three, four. And when I say four, let's all breathe together, okay? Here we go. One, two, three. Good, let's try that again. We're gonna breathe on beat four, and then we're gonna breathe out on the next beat. Ready? One, two, three. Awesome job. Now that you know how to breathe before playing the trumpet 
and you also know how to buzz your lips. You may be wondering, well, what are these valves for? And the valves are very important for playing the trumpet. In order to play the trumpet and change notes and to play low notes and high notes, you have to be able to push down these valves to play the correct note. Did you hear how the notes changed every time I pressed one of the valves? I'm sure you did. The trumpet plays a lot of different styles of music. It can play classical music. It can play jazz. It can play rock and roll. It can play pop music. And it can play fanfares. It can play solos. It can play beautifully. It can play loud. It can play powerfully. And it can also play delicately. That was pretty high. Now that you know how the trumpet works, you can learn what all these objects are. These are mutes, and they all make different sounds. There are also different kinds of trumpets. Look at all those trumpets. The first one is called a piccolo trumpet. A piccolo trumpet is small and it plays really high. The next trumpet is a little bit bigger and it's called an E flat trumpet. Next one is a C trumpet. And the last one is a B flat trumpet. The piccolo trumpet is capable of playing really high notes. And in a lot of music, especially Baroque music from Bach and Handel and Telemann, the trumpet parts were really high. So we have a piccolo trumpet that makes playing those notes a lot easier. Let's listen to a fanfare for the piccolo trumpet. This fanfare is written in the Baroque style. The C trumpet is very similar to the B flat trumpet. Can you notice what the difference is between these two trumpets? If you guess that the C trumpet is shorter and that the B flat trumpet is longer, you guessed right. Because of the difference in length, the C trumpet is slightly brighter and can play slightly higher than the B flat trumpet. The E flat trumpet is slightly smaller than the C trumpet and slightly bigger than the piccolo trumpet. The E flat trumpet is used in a variety of settings but mainly classical music. Here's an example of music from Beethoven. Now that I've showed you how the trumpets sound, I want to show you what all of these objects are right here. These are called mutes and they're inserted into the bell of the trumpet. Like that. Not like that. This way. This is called a straight mute. It's made of metal and it makes the trumpet sound even more metallic. I'm sure you can hear the difference. This is called a harmon mute. The harmon mute is also made of metal, but because of the shape of it, it sounds completely different than the straight mute. Let's listen to the harmon mute.
Oftentimes, the Harmon mute is used in jazz and commercial settings. This mute here is called a cup mute because this portion of the mute at the bottom looks exactly like a cup or a bowl. This mute is my friend's favorite mute because it makes the trumpet sound really, really quiet. Here's what this practice mute sounds like on the trumpet. Wow, that was soft. I hope you can still hear it. This mute, some of you might recognize what this is. This is actually a plunger. You may have seen one of these in your bathroom. Fortunately, this plunger is not from my bathroom. I bought it fresh from the hardware store and it actually produces a nice effect on the trumpet that's used a lot in jazz. Here's a little bit of what that can sound like. Do you hear the effect of the plunger? It kind of sounds like wah-wah. That same effect of wah-wah can actually also be made on the harmon mute by inserting this stem. You can see that the shape of the stem and the shape of the plunger are kind of similar, but to different degrees. Here's the wah-wah effect on a harmon mute. And finally, one of my favorite mutes is called a solo tone or a clear tone mute. This mute is from about 100 years ago and was used a lot in pop music, Broadway music, but especially in jazz. The trumpet can also play simple melodies, just like any other instrument. The trumpet can also play really fast. What do you think happens if I play the melody notes and I also play the fast notes at the same time. Let's listen to that. The trumpet can also sound like an animal. Can you guess which animal this sounds like? I bet you can guess what that animal is. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today to learn a little bit about the trumpet. I hope that you understand a little bit better about how the trumpet works, the different kinds of trumpets there are, and the different kinds of mutes and sounds that the trumpet can make. Before you go, I'll play you a short song from a French etude that was written about 100 years ago.
name's Alex, and I'm here to talk about the flute. The flute is a member of the woodwind family. You may have met some other members of the woodwind family, like the clarinet and like the oboe. If it's a member of the woodwind family, it doesn't look like it's made out of wood. The truth is, for a long time, the flute was made out of wood. And before that, it was even made out of bones. But nowadays, most of the flutes that you're gonna see are made out of different kinds of metal. But the, one of the coolest things about the flute is that you can make a flute out of anything. Bones, wood, plastic, aluminum, different kinds of metal, silver, and sometimes even gold, like this flute. This flute's made out of rose gold. Now, it's a woodwind instrument because we use our wind to play it. So you're telling me I can just put my air into this metal tube and it's going to make a sound. Well, let's see what happens. I'm just going to put my air right into it. I don't hear much of anything, do you? Well, that's because I can't just put my air directly into the, into the flute. I have to do something else. I have to blow across the top. So remember when I said you could make anything, you could make a flute out of anything? Well, you can also make anything into a flute, including bottles, right? So if I blow across the top of this bottle, I have a flute, kind of. So now I'm going to do that same exact thing across the top piece of the flute, which is called a head joint. Pretty cool, right? So then I attach that piece to the flute with all of the keys. And I do the same thing. I blow across the top. And I have the sound of the flute. Now, the flute can be used to play all different kinds of music. One of the things I love the most about the flute is that the different registers, so whether you're playing low or you're playing high, have such different characters and feelings, and they make you imagine different kinds of things. When I play low on the flute, sometimes it feels a little bit sad, but almost more lonely than sad. You know, like when you're all alone and maybe you're walking around outside, of a very beautiful hollow sound that sounds very lonely. Music is supposed to take us to many different places and one of the places that composers really like to help us imagine through sound is the outdoors, is nature. Nature, who doesn't love nature? You have the trees and the sky and the clouds and the sea and the rivers and the trees, did I mention the trees? And who lives in the trees? The birds. Birds have amazing songs and they've inspired so many composers to write songs and pieces that make you think of birds. And a lot of the times, because the flute plays high, it's meant to capture the spirit of the birds. I'm gonna play a piece by Vivaldi called The Goldfinch, where the flute is meant to represent the beautiful bird song of the goldfinch, which is a tiny bird with a very sweet song.
Did you feel like you were in the trees listening to the birds chatter? I hope so. Now that you've met the main flute, I'm going to introduce you to other members of the flute family. One of my favorite things about playing the flute is that in addition to playing this flute mostly, I also get to play other kinds of flutes that all have different sounds and different personalities. The first flute that I'm going to show you is the piccolo. Look how tiny it is. Look how cute it is. And yes, it's made out of wood. Most of the time when you go to see orchestras and bands play, the only flute that's gonna be made out of wood is the piccolo. Now the piccolo is small, but the piccolo is mighty and fierce. It has a beautiful bright sound and it's capable of so much magic, especially when you hear it within the orchestra. It soars above everything. And when you play the piccolo in an orchestra, it's almost like you're surfing, right? If the orchestra is this big wave and you, when you play the piccolo, you're just on top of it and it's so much fun. Now I'm gonna show you the next flute that is bigger than the flutes and it is called the alto flute. So right now I've got my C flute and you can see how much bigger the alto flute is, right? So if the piccolo was smaller and it played higher, then this flute, the alto flute, is going to play lower. Let's hear a little bit of this sound. of the alto flute. It's one of my favorite sounds. It's just so beautiful and so magical and to me it doesn't sound like anything else. So guess what? You're probably thinking that there can't possibly be a flute bigger than this, right? Well, there is and I can barely lift it. It's the bass flute. What? Look how huge that is. Okay, now you see how the bass flute is curved at the top? That's because if it wasn't, I would have to have an arm extension surgery in order to play it, right? If this was folded out like this, I wouldn't be able to reach the keys. So they curve it around so that I can play it comfortably. sound, right? Much lower and richer and a little more mellow than the other flutes. Now that I've showed you some of the different kinds of music that the flute can play and its kind of natural voice, I'd like to show you some funny sounds that maybe you didn't even know the flute could make. The first thing I'm going to show you is flutter tonguing. So flutter tonguing is the sound that happens when you roll your R's into the flute. What's rolling your R's? Well, if you speak Spanish, you roll your R's all the time, right? It's this sound. Right? Uh, so when I do that and I play the flute, that is called the flutter tongue. Now, in addition to that, we can also make sounds that sound kind of like percussion, like drums, by using the keys and then our air with the keys. We can sound like drums. Pretty cool, right? And what happens when I do that on a big flute, right? These keys are even bigger than the flute keys. So. So they sound louder and lower. Now I'm going to bring 
all of the flute family together and play for you an arrangement of a piece written by Maurice Ravel. He was a French composer. And this piece is called Tombeau de Couperin. I hope that you can listen for the different kinds of flutes, the bass flute and the alto flute and the flute and the piccolo, and how they create this river of sound crossing all registers. And they help you imagine that you're in a beautiful forest maybe by a beautiful river and it's very peaceful and you hear the birds. My name is Mario, like Super Mario, which maybe some of you have heard about um, in a video game. But anyways, I am here to tell you a little bit about this instrument. Can you tell me what the name of this instrument is? If you said viola, you are correct. Now, the viola looks a lot like another instrument the violin. Do you see how they're different? So the viola is bigger than the violin and as you will hear it is also lower in pitch or range than the violin. So the violin is higher and the viola is a little lower. And as we go down in pitch in the string instrument family we get bigger in size. So the viola is larger than the violins, and then the cellos are bigger than the violas, and the double basses, which are at the very bottom of the orchestral range, are the biggest string instruments in the orchestra. And altogether, they make up the string family. So, in an orchestra, the violas are sandwiched in the middle of the low instruments, the basses and the cellos, and the high instruments, the violins. 
and we get to play with all the instruments in the orchestra, like the winds and the brass and the percussion instruments. So we're often filling out the sound and the texture of the orchestra. Now, I love to play this specific range because this specific range is very similar to the human voice. And just like the human voice, the violas can sing and I'm able to express myself through my instrument and through music. When we learn how to play our instruments in this way, we can pretty much make any expression of our feelings, which is really fun. And playing music is fun. Listening to music is fun because I like to listen to what other people want to express as well. So, what makes the viola very special? Well, the unique sound of the viola is unlike any other string instrument. And I'm going to show you a few examples so that you can hear the variety of unique sounds that I can make on my viola. And just because we love to play with everyone in the orchestra and to harmonize with everyone, doesn't mean we can't stand out and be a little wild and boisterous when we're on our own. So I'm going to play for you a piece of music that was written for the viola all by itself. And this piece was written by the composer Paul Hindemith. <laughs> see the viola can be wild and boisterous. The viola can also sound very mysterious, kind of like we're in a dream. So let's check out a very different example of another solo piece by the same composer, Paul Hindemith. Did you hear something mysterious and dreamlike in that example? Okay, let's do another one. This is a little dance called Courant by Johann Sebastian Bach. And while you listen, can you imagine and picture your favorite animal dancing to the music? Let me know which favorite animal you chose.
So which favorite animal did you picture dancing to the Courant by Johann Sebastian Bach? Often when we play music, we can tell a story, kind of like a painter can paint a picture of a scene or of a person or maybe of a bird. So here's one last song that I'm going to play for you and it's a song that was inspired by a very elegant and beautiful bird called the swan. Let's try to picture a swan while we listen. Thank you so much for listening today and learning about the viola. I hope you'll come by and say hello at the next night's concert. I would love to meet you. See you soon. Is the pitch range of a viola lower or higher than that of a violin? A, lower. B, higher. C, exactly the same. The range of the viola is similar to which of the following? A, the brass section. B, the human voice. C, farm animals. D,
traffic noises. The top piece of a flute is called what? A. The mouth hat. B. The whistle opening. C. The head joint. D. The top part. Which kind of flute is made out of wood? A. The piccolo. B. The alto flute. C. The bass flute. D. The flute. Which of these is not a part of a trumpet? A. Series of tubes. B. Mouthpiece. C. Bell. D. Reed. Which of these mutes helps the trumpet sound softer? A. The straight mute. B. The practice mute. C. The harmon mute. D. The plunger mute.